for example in rajya sabha the particular res- resolution is being introduced so one fourth of the total membership of the house should sign that resolution Good evening, students. Welcome back to Plutus IS. So, in our 95 days prelims challenge, uh, we will see our next topic. So, the topic for today's discussion is the President of India. So, the President, as you all know, uh, this topic also, the the President's topic also, very important uh, for uh, our examination, especially especially in the prelims examination. There are number of uh, questions being asked from this topic. so right without wasting much time we will go and see the topic so president is the constitutional head so basically he is the constitutional head so the president serves as the constitutional head of the state representing symbolically representing the nation so he represents the nation symbolically right uh, he has limited decision making role as you all know the council of ministers that is headed by the prime minister it wields the real authority uh, when it comes to power in making decisions so basically uh, the president has limited decision making role similarly he is a de jure authority so the prime minister the council of ministers headed by the prime minister it is the de facto authority so uh the prime minister is the de facto authority but the pres- the president is the de jure authority so <coughs> the president is not ultimate in deciding directing and uh, determining the factor uh, in uh, determining factor in the governance so basically all these things um will i mean will be done by the council of ministers headed by the prime minister the so next article 50, 52 says that um article 52 ex- expressly establishes the office of president of india so from where does the uh, office of the president come it comes from the article 52 of the constitution of india similarly article 53 it says that article 53 one vests the executive powers of the union in the president so all the power of executive power is vested with the president president uh, within the president of india according to article 53 1 so please try to remember these two articles uh, this will these two articles actually uh, show us the importance importance of the office of the president similarly in the main examination also you can quote these two articles when you are writing your main answer uh, about the president right right so next the powers that are which president the president either directly exercise can be exercised by the president or through the subordinate officers according according to the constitution so the president can directly exercise these executive powers or he can exercise those powers through the officers appointed by him right uh, another important point is he acts on the advice of the council of ministers so this is very very po- very very important point actually he acts on the aid and ad- advice of the council of ministers right the council of ministers plays a cru- crucial role in providing advice in various matters of govern- uh, governance so as we have understood earlier also the council of council of ministers headed by the prime minister they hold the actual power so from time to time they will advise the president about the governance process right so next uh, we will see the important articles that are associated with the office of the president so article 52 we have seen the establishment of office of the president so article 52 specifies that article 53 vesting the executive power of the union to the president next article 54 details the manner of election of the president so in our country the election of president has a uh, kind of 
डिफरेंट ए डिस्टिंक्ट मेथड ऑफ इलेक्शन वी हैव फॉर इलेक्टिंग द प्रेसिडेंट तो आर्टिकल 54 डिलीनेट्स दोस द प्रोसेस ऑफ इलेक्शन ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट राइट नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल 55 it further elaborates on the manner of election of the president so further uh, the procedure is mentioned in the article 55 of the constitution next article 56 it outlines the tenure of the president and the conditions for shorter time what happens if the president uh, leaves his office early so basically the tenure of the president is 5 years so all these things are uh, mentioned in the article 56 of the constitution next article 57 uh, it says the eligibility eligibility criteria for uh, re election of the office of the president as you all know there is an option of re election to the office of the president we will see the details later in this lecture itself next one is article 58 qualifications required for the election as a president so there are some conditions that are mentioned in the constitution itself for the criteria that makes a person eligible to contest for the position of president right right uh next article 59 conditions under which the president's office to be held next article 60 oath or affirmation to be taken by the president before assuming office so the president has to take uh, three types of oaths so all these uh, oaths are mentioned mentioned in article 60 of the constitution next article 61 procedure for a procedure for impeachment of the president so this is also very very important from point of view of the examination there may be a question from this area right article 62 it specifies time for holding presidential election when the office is vacant so when the office of the president uh, falls vacant the manner and the procedure of election of next president that is mentioned in article 62 next article 63 requirement for a candidate to secure a certain number of uh, votes for election of president so we call it as quota so to be elected as a president a person should secure 50% of the total votes existing plus one vote so <coughs> this is called in technical terms quota and a person to be uh, elected declared elected as a president should secure at least 50% of the uh, eligible votes and plus one person, uh, one vote so then he can be considered for election as a Uh, election uh, he can considered as a, a candidate elected for the post of president next next we will see the election of the president and some details about it <coughs> right it holds highest importance so the, the he is the first first citizen of india so the election and election pr- procedure has a lot of importance when it comes comes to election of the president we uh, we see the qualifications as, as per the article 58 of the constitution so the person contesting for the post of election should be a citizen of india uh, he should be above 35 years of age next qualified for election to the lower house of the parliament this is so he should be eligible to be elected as a member of parliament for lok sabha lok lower house means lok sabha so there are separately a lot of conditions that are placed for election uh, election el- for uh, eligible eligible to be contesting for lok sabha elections so uh, the candidate contesting for the po- position of president shall also be fulfilling these conditions next he should not be holding any office of profit under union or state governments so he should not be holding any office of profit so these are some of the conditions that are mentioned in article 58 of the constitution next we will see the method of election so 
uh, president is elected through an indirect election process. Please remember this one. The president is elected through indirect elections. So, <coughs> the constitution has laid down a process of indirect election for the post of uh, president of India. Right. The method followed is proportional representation by means of single transferable vote system. Just remember this name proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. So, this basically this method is followed uh, in electing the president. We will see some features of this proportional representation system and what is mean by single transferable vote. Right. <coughs> Next, it, uh, it, I mean, the people who are eligible to elect the president of India, basically they are called as electoral college to elect the president of India. So, the members, who will be the members of the electoral college? So, this is a very, very important area. Uh, there may be a question from this area because it is a little bit confusing and uh, interesting also. So, try, try to remember this aspect. Uh, the people who constitute the electoral college that elects the president of India. So, first point is uh, elected members of the both houses of parliament. So, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. Sabha and the Lok Sabha. So, the elected members of these two houses. Remember, uh, the nominated members are not eligible to be part of the electoral college. Only elected representatives. As we all know, Rajya Sabha, 12 members are nominated. These 12 members are not eligible to be part of the electoral college. Only the elected representative, uh, representatives, only they are uh, eligible to be part of the electoral college. <coughs> Next, uh, elected members of state le legislative assemblies. <coughs> they also eligible to be part of the electoral college. Remember, the members of the legislative council council these people are not even if they are elected they are not eligible to be part of the electoral college because the reason because not all the states have the uh, legislative councils only few states uh, have the legislative council so they are not eligible to be part of the electoral college only elected members of the legislative assembly they are eligible to be part of uh, part of the legislative uh, electoral college sorry electoral college next the elected members of the legislative assemblies of union territories uh, those are delhi and pondicherry they are also eligible to be part of the electoral college uh, remember we also have the legislative assembly of jammu and kashmir but now the elected members are not there here. The elections are not, not yet conducted. This is also made as Indian territory with a legislative assembly. <coughs> so, in future, whenever the legislative assembly uh, will be formed, they will also become eligible to be part of the electoral college. So, this is a very, very critical information. Uh, please try to remember and try to have clarity. So, basically, the nominated members are not eligible to be part of the electoral college and also similarly the members hailing from the legislative councils they are also not eligible to be part of the electoral college right next we will see the term, term of office and uh, the method of impeachment impeachment procedure so basically uh, the time period for uh, post of president is five years. Once he uh, he or she is elected, they will hold the office for five years <coughs> from the date of assuming of office. Also, this is also important. It can be I mean there there can be an option in the uh, examination like that. Uh, it is from the date of appointment, from the date of uh, elections, etc., etc. And the examiner may try to confuse you. Remember that. Uh, the president, the candidate will hold the office of the president from the date of assumption, assumption of office. So, try to remember this point. Next, 
re-election to the presidency is permissible. So a person holding the office of the president, he can contest another, I mean, contest for further uh, being a further for further being a president. So there is no bar from the constitution part. So there, there is no bar. A person can again contest for uh, being a president. But however, in practice, re-election re is only uh, allowed for a second term. For example, Rajendra Prasad, uh, he was elected as a president for the second time, but he uh, he was willing to, uh, I mean, he was willing to contest for the third time also. But, uh, I mean, he could not do because in practice, it was it is being followed that uh, the position of president can be hold for only two times. So, re-election is allowed for only time. But remember, this is only in practice. Uh, the constitution allows uh, there is no bar in the constitution for re-election. Uh, the constitution says that uh, a person elected as the president can contest uh, uh, any I mean any number of times. There is no bar from the constitution. But in practice, there is uh, there is only chance for two terms. Please try to remember this point. Next is uh, the grounds for leaving the office. So the president can uh, resi uh, give resignation to his position by writing in his own writing, uh, own, own handwriting, addressing that uh, resignation letter to vice, Pre vice President of India. So he can resign by addressing the letter to the Vice President of India. Next, we will see the impeachment. Removal process of President is called uh, impeachment. So basically, the impeachment is called, uh, is a quasi-judicial procedure and uh, this is done by the parliament. So this is basically a quasi-judicial procedure. <coughs> uh, if uh, the ground for uh, impeaching the president is, uh, there is only one ground mentioned in the constitution, that is violation of the constitution. Remember, on no other ground, the president can be impeached. He can be impeached, he or she can be impeached, impeached only on the ground of violation of constitution. So this is the only ground on which the president can be impeached from the position. So impeachment process, <coughs> the charges, impeachment process can occur in either of the houses. It can originate either in Rajya Sabha or in Lok Sabha <coughs> by bringing charges against the president and the charge should be only constitutional violations. So he can be charged no with no other uh, a kind of condition. The only condition is uh, constitutional violations. The other house initiating the charge can either conduct the uh, uh, investigation itself or delegate the responsibility to other house. So the house which is initiating the charges, it itself can conduct the uh, investigation or it can transfer the responsibility to the other, ho other house. Right. Next, conditions for levying charges on president. So, what are the conditions? How the uh, charges can be levied on the president? So, as a, a resolution, proposing charges must be presented after a 14 days notice uh, in writing, signed by at least one fourth of the total members of the that particular house. So, first of all, if the uh, impeachment process has to be started, a 14 days notice has to be served to the president and after the expiration of the 14 days, a resolution has to be introduced in the particular house. So if, uh, for example, in Rajya Sabha, the particular res resolution is being introduced. So one fourth of the total membership of the house should sign that resolution. So only then the resolution can be introduced in the, that, in the particular house. House. So, right. Next, uh, after introducing the resolution, if that uh, has to be passed, I mean, the uh, if the resolution has to be successfully passed, two thirds of the total membership of the that particular house should approve it. Right. So. Two third of the membership membership of the total membership of the house. So that many number of people should appro approve the resolution. Otherwise, 
uh, the uh, the resolution is declared as not passed right so once two third of the members of the uh, total membership of the house are approving it it is believed uh, it is deemed that uh, the <coughs> the resolution has been passed and the president will be impeached right so uh, rights of the president in investigation so while investigation process is going on uh, the president has particular rights uh, those rights are he or she is entitled to appear and represent himself before the house and he can defend his case in the particular house where the investigation is going on All right next outcome of investigation <coughs> if the resolution is passed with the two third of the total membership of membership of the house so it is uh, deemed that the charges have been approved by the particular house and uh, <coughs> it leads to the removal of the president from the office so uh, the important point is so the effective removal is the day when the resolution is passed so on the day which the resolution is passed in the second house that date is uh, that day will become the removal day of the, the particular president right interim leadership so when the president is uh, the president is uh, impeached or he is absent from the position the vice president he will act assume the charges of the office of the president so right so this is also becomes very important point because who will assume there may be a question that who will assume when the president post is vacant so basically the vice president he will uh, assume the charges of the president next so <coughs> next thing is uh, the powers of the president this is also very very important area so many a times the questions questions are being asked from this area so the questions are um, have been asked both uh, both in the prelims and as well as main so try to uh, remember the points so majorly these points are uh, factual points there are, there are not much analytical points so <coughs> majorly the points are factual points try to remember them and they will be uh, useful in the examination so basically the president ha ha president is having several powers i have classified them into uh, seven types so we will see one by one what are the uh, what are the powers that are wielded by the president so first of all executive powers so the executive actions all the executive actions of the government or government of india are formally carried out on the name of the president of india so each and every action that is formally carried on on the name of the president next is rule making authority right the president has the prerogative to establish, establish rules specifying the manner in which orders and other instruments made and executed in the name shall be authenticated so he can basically he can well um, i mean decide the uh, he can uh, ha he has the prerogative of making rules the manner in the uh, the manner in which administration has to be taken up right next appointment of prime minister and the minister so basically the president appoints the prime minister and also appoints the other ministers so he, he will also appoint the other ministers but this is only done on the recommendation of the prime minister so he will appoint he appoints the other ministers only on the recommendation of the prime minister next <coughs> all these uh, officials the prime minister and the other council of minister serve at the pleasure of the president so they will hold office during the pleasure of the president so this is also very very important point please try to remember this so the prime minister and uh, the council of minister for that matter all the officials appointed by the president they will hold the office during the pleasure of the president next key appointments the president appoints a lot of heads including attorney general of india comptroller uh, comptroller and auditor general chief election commissioner and other election commissioners so there are many number of posts to which the president appoints the heads right
So this is the point I was saying. All these appointees whom the president appoints, they will hold the office during the leisure of the president. So the next executive power is information seeking from the prime minister. So the prime minister, uh, the president, from time to time, can seek information from the prime minister, prime minister, on the matters related to administration. So uh, the power, the president, this is the important power the president is having. So he can uh, seek information from the prime minister from time to time on the matters related to administration. Right. The next power is commission appointment. So the president also appoints heads for various commissions uh, to investigate. The conditions of scheduled class, scheduled tribes, and other OVC classes. So this is also a very important power uh, the president is having. He can appoint commissions to inquire into the conditions of SCs, STs, and OVCs. So this is uh, one of the very important powers the president is having. Next, uh, interstate council. He will also appoint interstate council to facilitate relations between center and state and interstate relations. Next is administration of unity and territories. Right. He oversees the administration of union territories by appointing the administrator to uh, those union territories. So basically we, uh, the uh, president appoints lieutenant governors and other administrative officers to union territories they will he administers union territories through these officers next is declaration of very uh, special areas this is also very very important power when it comes to president so he can declare any area as scheduled area as you all know the scheduled areas are governed by different schedules schedule 5 and schedule 6 and they have special powers under these schedules and who can declare the uh, declare area scheduled area the president has the power to declare so. <coughs> right. 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 The next important uh, powers of the president are legislative powers. As you all know, uh, the president is part of the parliament. So basically, parliament comprises of three entities. One is Rajya Sabha. Next is Lok Sabha. The third is president. So, uh, the president is having very important, very important legislative powers, right? So he can summon, roro, and dissolve parliament. So he has those powers, right? Uh, the president has the authority to summon or prorogue the parliament, and he can dissolve the lower house of the parliament. So he can also. Someone a joint sitting, where is the uh, deadlock uh, regarding a particular bill. So if uh, there is an ordinary bill and uh, one house approves it and the other house rejects it, so the president can call a joint sitting of the uh, joint sitting of the both houses, to which the speaker will be uh, presiding. Right. So the president also have this power. Right. Next is addressing the parliament. So the president addresses the parliament <coughs> after the uh, first session of uh, first session after the every general election. So the president addresses uh, the parliament after every first session of uh, gen every general election and also first session of each year. This is basically the budget session. So the president addresses the but addresses the parliament during the budget session also. Actually, the, uh, the session starts with the speech of the president itself. Speech of the president itself. Right. Next, sending messages and bills. So, the president can send messages to both the houses of parliament concerning pending bills. So, if uh, there are any bills that are pending for a long time, so the president can send messages to the um, both houses regarding those bills. Okay. So the president can also appointing presiding officers whenever the post of speaker and deputy speaker uh, 
falls vacant or they are absent from the house so the president uh, will appoint a person who can chair that particular house similarly we will do for rajya sabha when chairman and deputy uh, deputy chairman are absent from the house he will decide a person and appoint a person uh, that person will chair the house right next uh, nomination powers so <coughs> the president nominates 12 uh, 12 members to the rajya sabha from fields like literature science art and social service so basically he nominates 12 persons to the rajya sabha similarly there was uh, a condition for lok sabha uh, the president uh, Uh, in the past uh, used to nominate two people from the anglo indian community <coughs> whenever he feels that their the particular community is not adequately represented in the parliament so this provision has been uh, withdrawn since 2019 <coughs> right so pres- at present there is no nomination of anglo indian members to the uh, parliament only 12 members are nominated to the rajya sabha right next the disqualification of members the president decide the disqualify uh, disqualification of members in cult- in consultation with the election commission so this is also very very important power the president is having so he decides the disqualification of members in cons- consultation with the election commission of india right next is recommendation on central bills so uh, remember this is also very very important aspect and this is a somewhat confusing area the examiner may try to confuse you by asking uh, different or conflicting points from here i try to have uh, clarity and try to answer correctly when it uh, when uh, this a question comes from this area so <coughs> the president basically provides prior recommendation to introduce specific bills specific bills so the bills can be related to expenditure from the consolidated uh, consolidated fund of india or alteration of state boundaries or creation of a new state so a particular bill if a particular bill is being introduced uh, for this subject prior recommendation of the president is required so because of this reason the president also cannot reject once the bills are passed by both the houses of parliament he has he has to give assent to this bills because these bills can only be introduced in the houses of the parliament with the prior recommendation of the president next assent to the bills withholding bills and return of the bills so when a bill is received from the parliament the president can give his assent to the bill means he can approve he can withhold the assent so this is uh, this is popularly called as pocket veto right so the president can withhold his assent or he can return the bill for reconsideration right uh the president can give his assent to the bill he can withhold his assent uh, uh withhold his uh, assent next is he can the, he can return the bill for reconsideration so the condition here is Uh, the president has no veto power on constitutional amendment bills as per the 24th uh, 24th amendment act of 1971 so here uh, we have to discuss one more point of uh, point about this one returning the bills if the if both houses of the parliament again pass that bill and assent to the assent of the president the president has to give his agreement or assent has to give his assent so if the bills are resent by the parliament so the president has to give his assent in this case we do not have the option of uh, rejecting them or uh, sending for reconsideration so this is these are some of the important points about the uh, president's uh, powers vis-a-vis the bills passed by the parliament right also we will see some points about the powers of the president with regard to state bills so as we all know the governor can reserve some bills for the consideration of the president when particular matters are involved in that particular bill so uh, the powers of the president when it comes to state bills are uh, 
So if when a state legislature passes a bill, the governor can reserve the bill for the consideration of the president. So in that case, the president can give his assent, withhold his assent or direct the governor to return the bill to uh, reconsideration. Right. So here, when it comes to here, the president has the uh, absolute will veto, means he can reject the bills. When it comes to center, uh, center's bills, he do not have the power of absolute veto. So he cannot reject the bills. In the state's bills case, he can reject the bills. So here, he has absolute veto. In that case, he do not have absolute veto. Right. Next, he can uh, promulgate ordinances whenever the parliament is not in session, but the particular ordinance has to be approved within the six weeks after the houses uh, assemble. So within the six weeks of the uh, reassembly of the uh, houses of the parliament, that particular ordinance has to be approved uh, by both houses of parliament. Otherwise, the ordinance becomes uh, non-existent. So uh, the parliament can issue ordinances to come up, I mean, uh, to address the uh, exigencies, important uh, developments. So when, whenever the houses are not in session. Next, calling for reports. The president has the authority to call for reports from Comptroller, uh, CAG, COG, and uh, UPSC, Finance Commission, and others. And uh, he lays down that particular bills uh, before the both houses of the parliament. Next is regulation of union territories he can uh, he can make regulations for governance of the union territories so these are some of the legislative powers that are executed or uh, the president is having next are uh, the financial powers so this is the third imp important aspect about the powers of the president the financial powers so authorization of Money bills. <coughs> so money bills can only introduced in the Lok Sabha with the prior approval of the and uh, permission of the president. So the money bills can, can only be introduced with the prior permission of the president. So because of this reason, he cannot reject the or uh, recent the money bills for reconsideration. Right. Next recommendation for grants. So, no demand uh, for grants can be made in the parliament without the prior approval of the president. Next, advances from the contingency fund. As we all know, the contingency fund will be under the <coughs> president. From this fund, the uh, contingency fund will be under the <coughs> control of the president. He can make advances from this contingency fund to address unforeseen expenditures. So there may be a case that a disaster may occur in a particular uh, place. So to address that particular situation, the president has the power to advance the grants from the uh, contingency fund of India. Right. Next uh, important power is uh, constitution of the finance commission. Uh, as we all know, the uh, Finance Commission is appointed for every uh, five years. Recently, the Commission, um, the Finance Commission has been appointed. Uh, so, the President has the power to appoint the Finance Commission. This is the power comes with the Article of 280. <coughs> for every year, the President constitutes the uh, uh, Finance Commission for equal distribution of equitable distribution of taxes between the center and States. Next, uh, the important other important powers are the judicial powers. Uh, so, appointment of judges. So, the president holds the authority to appoint the chief justice and other judges of Supreme Court and the High Court. So, the president appoints the chief justice justices to Supreme Court, High Courts, and also he has the power to appoint other judges. Next is pardon and clemency powers. So this is also a very, very important power the president is having. He can pardon, reprieve, respite and remission of punishment. Uh, try to know the meanings of these uh, words also. There is a chance that the question may be asked in the examination. Similarly, 
he can do the same for court martial court martial court martial so he can suspend remit and commute the sentence of any person particularly in cases where the punishment uh, punishment or sentence is by court martial so here in court martial we do not have the power to pardon he has only power to suspend remit or commute the sentence of any person but he he cannot pardon the sentence right next are emergency powers this is also very important area so the president can declare three types of emergency the first one is national emergency under article 352 so he the president holds the power to declare a national emergency under article 352 so <coughs> it also uh, uh, empowers the president to take special measure, measures to address the threats to security of india or any part thereof uh, whether it is arising from external aggression or internal armed rebellion so when the uh, emergency is declared on external aggression that is external emergency and when is uh, uh, the emergency is declared on the grounds of armed rebel uh, rebellion that is called internal emergency so right next is state emergency or we can call it as popularly call it as president's rule so this can be done under article 356 and article 365 right <coughs> right so this is declared state emergency is declared whenever the state fails to adhere to constitutional provisions and the governance within the state cannot be carried according to the constitution of india so whenever the constitutional machinery in a particular state breaks down constitutional machinery so try to remember this word also whenever the constitutional machinery in a state breaks down the president can impose state emergency or popularly we call it as the president's rule right also article 365 empowers the president to issue directions to a state to ensure compliance with the constitutional provisions so whenever this is this a state violates this provision or the instructions given by the president the president can impose the uh, uh, state emergency next one is financial emergency that is imposed through article 360 right so whenever uh, the president can declare a financial emer emergency whenever he feels that the financial stability or credit of india or any part thereof is threatened right <coughs> here the declaration grants of the president uh, the declaration grants the president authority to modify the financial arrangements of the states so here whenever the financial emergency is declared the president have the power to change the uh, financial arrangement between the center and states right the next power is diplomatic powers of the president so foreign affairs representation so <coughs> whenever the union establishes relationship with foreign countries so the president will take the i mean that uh, those things are being done on the name of the president next negotiation and the conclusion of treaties so the negotiation and conclusion of the treaties also takes place on the name of the president name of the president right however these agreements and the negotiations made are subjected to approval of the parliament which means the parliament has to approve those uh, treaties and negotiations next internal representation so the president represents india on international forums acting as the official representative of the nation on global stage so he will act as the representative of india at the international fora or platforms next is appointment of uh, appointment and the reception of diplomats the president has the authority to send and receive diplomats such as ambassadors high commissioner representing india's interest 
So he also have the particular power of deception and appointment of diplomats. Right. Next is military powers of the president. So <coughs> the important points here are he is the supreme commander of defense forces. So he is the uh, head of the def uh, sorry supreme commander of the defense forces. So the president holds the esteemed position of supreme commander of defense forces of India. Next, he appoints the service chiefs to army, navy, and air force. So in his capacity, as a as a in the capacity of commander, he appoints the heads to army, navy, and air force. Next is declaration of war and conclusion of peace uh, treaties. So the president has the authority. To to declare war and con conclude a peace treaty with the conditions that these actions are also subjected to approval of uh, parliament. So these are the important military, military powers of the president. So basically till now I have discussed the factual aspects. So we have to learn the factual aspects whenever it comes to the powers of the pre president of India. So in the past also there are um, there are a lot of questions that are being asked from this area so try to remember this information now we will see the list of presidents so till now there are 13 presidents uh, to india uh, we will see the list and their tenure also so first president was uh, dr rajendra prasad he hold, he held the office for two terms from uh, 1950 to 1962 Next president was Sarvepalli Radhakrishnan, 1962, 1962 to 1967. Right. <coughs> right. Next president was Jakir Hussain, Dr. Jakir Hussain, 1967 to 1969. Unfortunately, he expired. Next came the president, V.V. Giri, 1969 to 1974. Next uh, president was Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad. His tenure was 1974 to 1977. He also un un unfortunately expired. Uh, he could not complete uh, his term. And the uh, next, uh, next president was Neelam Sanjeev Reddy. His tenure was 1977 to 1982. Uh, next was Gyanis Jail Singh. His tenure was from 1982 to 1987. Uh, he was uh, in news for the post office bill. Uh, so he used his pocket veto power with respect to the post office bill. Next was R. Venkataraman. His tenure was 1987 to 1992. Next was Abdul Kalam, 2002 to 2007. He was also called as the popularly known as the People's President. Right. Uh, next president was uh, Pratibha Patil. Uh, her tenure was from 2007 to 2012. Next president was Pranab Mukherjee. His tenure was 2012 to 2017. Next came Ramnath Kovi. Uh, his tenure was 2017 to 2022 and the present president is respected Draupadi Murmu. And her tenure started in 2022. <coughs> so this is the basic uh, information I thought uh, which I thought will be useful in, uh, for the purpose of examination. I hope you got some useful and uh, important information. Next we will see. Uh, some multiple choice questions which are previously asked in the examination. So now we will see some uh, previous year's questions that are asked in the prelims examination. The first question is, I have taken uh, this question is asked in 2023 itself. The question is, consider the following statements. The first option is, if the election of the President of India is declared void by the Supreme Court of India, all the acts done by him or her in the performance of duties of his or her office of president before the date of uh, decision become invalid. So this is the first option. You can see uh, this is an incorrect statement because even if the election of the president is declared, uh, declared uh, void or invalid, invalid, 
so the actions <coughs> uh, th- that are taken by the particular candidate uh, during the tenure of office will remain they uh, will not become invalid so because of this reason this statement becomes incorrect the next statement is <coughs> elections for the post of president of india can be postponed on the ground that some legislative assemblies have been dissolved and the elections are yet to take place so as we can say this is also a uh, incorrect statement because uh, the elections to the president uh, have taken place even when uh, some legislative elections to some legislative assemblies are pending <coughs> so actually this has been challenged in the court that some states went to uh, supreme court that Uh, some of the legislative assemblies are vacant so the president election has to be postponed but the court rejected this intention so it uh, said that even if uh, elections to some legislative assemblies or seats are pending the president's election will take place and there should be no postponing so this statement also becomes invalid next one is when a bill presented to the president of india the constitution prescribes time limits within which he he or she has to declare uh, declare his uh, assent so this is also incorrect statement because there is no time limit mentioned in the constitution for the president to give his uh, uh, assent so uh, the three sentences that are given are incorrect so option becomes option d none so none of the statements given in the question are correct right the next question is Consider the consider the following statements. So this particular question is asked in 2022. Uh, the first option is a bill amending the constitution requires prior recommendation of the president of India. Right. The next option is when a uh, when a constitution amend bill uh, amendment bill is presented to the uh, presented to the president of India, it is obligatory on the president of India to give his her her assent. This is the second option. The third one is. a constitution amendment bill must be passed by both the lok sabha and the rajya sabha by a special majority and there is no provision for joint sitting so the third one is the somewhat easiest option we can we can decide upon it so there is no joint sitting when it comes to money bills and constitutional amendment bills so the provision of joint sitting is there only when it comes to ordinary bills so the <coughs> third uh, statement is correct we we see the second statements whenever a constitution amendment bill is presented to the president of india it is obligatory for the president of india to give his assent so this is also correct uh, in the matters of constitutional amendment uh, bill the president has to give his as assent we have seen the 24th constitutional amendment through which this has been made mandatory on the uh, president to give his assent to the bills which pertaining to that are pertaining to constitutional amendment now we will see the first option a bill amending the constitution requires a prior recommendation of the president so we can see this is an incorrect statement prior recommendation is required when it comes to money bills and the bills altering the boundaries of the states in only these two conditions prior recommendation of the president is required so in this particular uh, case uh, the bills pertaining to constitutional amendment acts so no prior recommendation of the president is required so this statement becomes incorrect so the correct terms uh, correct answer is answer b only 2 and 3 right so this is itself uh, this is all for uh, today uh i hope you you have got some uh, knowledge uh, knowledge and the valid uh, valuable information uh, see you next time bye